Hello, voters out there. For the second week for this election on November 6th to speak to you. And I'm again dressed to scare you so that you vote yes, obviously. See all our signs here? And I want to talk to you a little bit about something that was left on my doorstep, I think, today. Um, is a little care over from last week when we had John Scott on the show. Um, this is for, uh, I have to comment on this, from Christine Conley. And uh, it says on the bottom, you can't probably see it, it says, the best line of defense for women, women in office. I find this a terrible advertisement, and I hope when you folks vote that you vote for the most capable person with the ideas of how to turn Connecticut and Groton around, not vote for people because they're just a female. And I'm a female, and I think this is, is that, if that's all she's got to offer, then, you know, that's pretty, pretty, pretty harsh, pretty terrible. So just remember that when you vote on November 6th. So let me take my mask off. Isn't it scary? And look at, I've got the chain that Connecticut, and you'll be learning today on this show how the Groton has put a chain around us. Um, and again, I'm not dressed this way for Halloween. I'm dressed like this to, because I'm going to be giving you lots of frightening data. And look at the our tombstone here with spiders. Look, I got spiders crawling up me. And if we head down this path that Connecticut is on now and Groton, we will be going to a tombstone in Groton. Groton will be dying as a town. So let me get this mask off so I can breathe and I can see. Um, so this is all about this vote yes situation. And we're back to the name Shake Up Groton. I said last week we were Shake Up Connecticut. Um, so, and, and this show is all about to explain to you what vote yes means. I think there's a lot of confusion out there. Um, this is very similar to the governor's race, which is why I have Bob Stefanowski sign up, because he represents a different direction for Connecticut. And I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or independent. you got to admit that things aren't so great here. And if you drive through Groton, it doesn't take an uh, economist to figure out that things aren't too great in, Ken in Groton either. So voting yes is very similar to voting for Bob. And the only reason to vote no, I think that's important for all of you to understand this, because you're seeing these vote no signs out there, if you are an employee of the town. Because, and we'll get into that, a vote yes means that you, the citizens and voters of Groton, will control the budget in Groton. So uh, if you're an employee of the town, your job may be at stake or your, or your, um, your pay level. Um, or you would vote no if you're dependent on the town for social services. Uh, or, and most importantly, if you're an elected person in Groton, you're on the town council. And I'm going to exclude, there. I know there are RTM members who are sick of going to these do-nothing meetings and they are going to vote yes. But and there are some counselors too, but the vast majority wants to retain the power. So, so no one, the bottom line is no one with any common sense, irregardless of party, which includes the private sector, working people who struggle, like I know many of you are, to make ends meet, and watching the, I, these taxes, these property taxes. I now have to put aside, I say this over almost every show, $3,700 a month just to stand still, just to pay my property tax. Folks, it's not sustainable. And this is all, of, and, and this has been going on for decades, which you're going to see. And I also want to include you renters out there. You are, renters often say, well, why should I care? Why should I vote? You should vote because your rent, I've been a landlord for a lot of my life. Your rent is not going to stay the same if property tax goes up. It is going to have to go up because that landlord's got to get the money from somewhere, and that's from you. Um, we have become, at least I have, a prisoner in my own town because 
And I don't. And if you're a residential, commercial, you are a prisoner here because to sell your property is almost impossible unless you're willing to take a huge hit. So I don't want to continue to be a prisoner in my town. I want the option to sell if I want to and leave. And right now, due to the gloomy situation, you are a prisoner. It is quite obvious that politics has to get out of the decision-making of how your tax dollars are spent. That's the problem here. And a vote yes, vote yes, will, will, will uh, give you that power to determine how your tax dollars are spent. This is, um, so, I, I see these newest signs up by this other group, and we're going to talk about them, the vote no group, that says if you vote yes, it means you're going, your vote is going to reduce our education budget. That is ridiculous. It's another scare tactic. Just like on this Stefanowski, Lamont's advertising, he says that class sizes will get bigger, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, what a vote yes means is that your government's going to have to think before they vote to spend money. Like I was at a council meeting not overly long, last council a year ago, and they spent $350,000 for electric cars within 10 minutes, no discussion, nothing, didn't even think about it. And a quarter of a million, more than a quarter million of your money was gone without any thought to it. They got to stop and think, do we need that? Do we want a complicated piece of equipment like electric cars? Are they Main Street yet? Do we have the mechanics to take care of them? So that's what it will do the, if we can change our gun. I'm going to get into what vote yes really means. It means that we may have to revisit this crazy school bill that you all voted in a, for a majority of to, to build this new school, which we need like a hole in the head. Our population is reducing. Um, we've gone, in my lifetime here, and I'm 61 years old, we have gone from a population of 40,000 people down to 29,000. That's huge. Schools, we don't need new schools. Um, so, and you voted before all heck broke loose with, uh, with our Governor Malloy when he threatened us a year ago with not giving us the money. I did a show on this, not giving us the money to compensate for the, uh, the teacher's retirement. Um, I think if we voted again, things would be changed. And if we squeeze, you know, the budget, we may, you know, that they got to find money somewhere. And I'm going to show you the numbers. I believe I've showed them in past shows. Oh, and this is show eight, by the way. Um, we're going to, for 18 years, we're going to have a mill rate just to pay for the construction of the school. And we're going to go through that. That's greater than one. How in the world we can sustain this, I don't know. I'm a product of the school system. I went all the way through Groton. I got an, uh, an engineering degree. I got an MBA from one of the top schools in the country. I work for very famous families, uh, uh, rich families in the country. I've been all over the world with my work. I think I did just fine and came out just fine. And I had class sizes that were 30 or more. 30 was a small class. You know, and we have technology. We didn't have technology back in the days I was in school. And technology is like a third hand for a teacher. Uh, it's another, uh, you know, a quarter of a teacher in the classroom. So I don't understand this big thing that automatically, if you have more than 30 or more kids in a class, that education is going to deteriorate. Uh, I don't agree with that. There's a lot more factors than that. Um, and back when I went to school, we were not a failing school system as we are now. We are now part of this alliance district. And we are one of the highest. When you always see the number of per student that we spend in Groton, we're one of the highest in south, southeastern Connecticut, but we do, our students perform some of the worst, which is why we are in, we're included in towns like uh, uh, New Britain, uh, Waterbury, New Haven, Bridgeport. It's embarrassing. And you have to think about the impact of family on families when they are struggling to make ends meet and they have to make choices at home because they don't have the money because they have to pay their property tax 
And I think if a child is li living that kind of stress at home, it's much worse than having a class of 30 kids, much worse. So we don't think about that because really it's the teachers who don't want that. It's not, the students are fine, okay? So this show, the show times for the last week's show, Vote for Hard for Change with John Scott, show number seven is on Tuesdays at 8.30, Thursday at 8, Saturday at 9. And this show, the Vote Yes show, show number eight, is on Monday at 5, Wednesday at 9, Friday at 7, and Sunday at 7. Okay, and all our, those that times are all in the evening, the p.m., okay? And those will repeat until the election on November 6th. And they're also, I forgot to mention this in the last show, they're all viewable on YouTube. You go to www.youtube.com and you look, you'll see all the shows and, it, and you look for show number eight or show number seven. And you can do that at your leisure. And, and if you have questions, and I don't blame you if you have questions, because this is a complicated question, this vote, yes. You can email me at shakeupgrotten at gmail.com, and please send me your questions. And if you want me to call you, put your phone number in, and I will call you back. And I will repeat these times at the end of the show, so get your pen out if you didn't catch them, but you can always go to YouTube. Um, we have a lot of ground to cover in the show. It will be probably over an hour long, this show, so get yourself comfortable. And please listen. This is a complicated topic, and after you listen, I think you will conclude you have no real choice but to vote yes. Um, I want to repeat, as I do at many shows, that I am a registered Republican. I'm not covering any of this up, but I never vote a straight party line. I don't think I have in my entire life. Life. I think last election I voted for more Democrats than I did Republicans. I may have made a mistake, um, but I don't vote party line. I vote on a candidate. Very similar to this thing from Conley. I don't vote because somebody's a woman. I don't, I don't really care. I don't care if it's a, a monkey. Uh, if they are saying things that are going to help bring our town and community out of the economic slump that it's in, they're going to get my vote. Groton voters is in financial trouble. I believe it will go bankrupt if we don't have any kind of structural change. Um, we're showing my, my uh, mascot right now, my bull. I haven't named him yet. Um, you can see he even is going to, he represents Groton. I, you can't see on the front of the matador is my name, and I'm taming the bull here. And he has a blindfold on. And that blindfold is because the people, and that's what this show is going to be a lot about, how the town of Groton, the, especially the elected people, they don't seem to see what's going on at all. So we're going to, this is a, a symbol of what's going on in Groton. Um, so I have found that many people do not understand this uh, ballot question. First of all, some of you think we're voting on the new school. Now, we voted on that already. Um, I hope by the end of the show you will understand exactly what your vote, why you should vote yes and the why. Um, and some of you who have Stefanowski signs in your yard have a vote no sign in your yard. And I have no understanding, and I, I'm just going to assume you don't understand what vote yes means. Um, so listen, because if you're a Stefanowski or a for change voter, you're certainly going to be a vote yes uh, voter too. Um, and I just want to comment, you know, there's this, this third, he's not a, he's a third party, Oz Griebel, Bell, he's, all, he's actually a Republican. Um, he has no chance of winning the governorship. So please don't waste your vote. vote because he will not have the support of the House and Senate. And as we've learned, if you don't have the House and Senate with you, you're going to get nothing accomplished. And Connecticut can't, can't afford another four years. And this vote, yes, has nothing to do with party. Nothing, okay? This is, uh, and I'm going to tell you why it has nothing to do with party. 
It's to do with your ability to control things that have been uh, neglected and grotten, the spending of your money. Our elected people and the management they hire, which is the town manager, the police chief, the uh, inspector, the uh, planner, the head of planning. Um, in my opinion, I haven't done an economic development show yet, but in my opinion, the elected people have done a terrible job. And that's the last council who was Republican and got completely voted out, and this council now that they've been in for a little over a year, isn't much better. So, um, which is why we need significant change in the structure of our government in Groton. And that's what this vote yes is all about, changing structure. I would like to dedicate this show to someone that passed away quite a while ago. And her name, some of you may remember, she was very active in Groton politics. I was a Republican, she was a Democrat, and her name was Sally McGurr. Um, she was from the city. Betsy Giesing and her, who was a Republican, started the Concerned Citizens in Groton. These back in the days of John Pillar. Um, I was one of the members of it. I was one of the youngest. And I petitioned twice, uh, and I'll talk about that, to do the right to reference. Sally McGurr and I got appointed to a Charter Revision Commission for that purpose, and that was 20 years ago, okay? And um, there's something wrong with the camera, Frank. Um, so I don't know. You've got to fix that. Um, so 20 years ago, this issue was here. A lot of these folks here who are involved don't know this. They weren't around then. I go way back in Groton. Um, most of the people who were involved uh, are no longer alive. And the concerned citizens' primary goal was to do what we're going to be voting on. So I'm really pleased that uh, we're coming to a vote on this. Sally and others, including me, believe that Groton needs a, des a, desire, a dire change in our government structure. If we ever, back then it was good days. EB had a lot of employees, things were good here. But we believed if we ever hit hard financial times as we are hitting now, that our, our structure will crush under the weight of that. And that is what is happening now. It cannot handle it, its spending is out of control. And a vote yes will be the first steps towards turning this very inefficient ship called Groton around. So last week's show was to make you scared for change in state government. And this week's show is to scare you into voting yes for a major, major train in Groton government. This election is more important, in my opinion, than the presidential election. I think this, you know, as elections get closer to home, they have an, much more of an impact on your daily life. So local elections are really important. And, you know, one vote matters because some of these votes go down to single-digit numbers. So please vote. It, very important for our future here. Um, and if I had, people are going to be shocked that I'm saying this. If I had a choice between... Bob Stefanowski winning the governor race, or we win to get a change in our structure of our town government, I would say the latter. I think it's more important to my life and most of you out there that we change Groton's structure because it's, 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 not, it's, cause, it's gonna cost us a fortune to keep going this way. Okay, so. Voting yes will put you, the voter, and taxpayer in control instead of the politicians from both parties who have arrogantly mishandled your hard-earned taxes and thus trust and put Groton on a crass course to insolvency. And again, I predict bankruptcy for Groton if we continue on this path. I don't want to scare you, but it is scary. Okay, and we are not efficient in using the assets of our town and money by combining the city and the town, okay? There has been no effort whatsoever to achieve this, none. And I'm gonna go into more detail. 
Um, we have no effective economic development. I haven't done an economic development show yet, but we don't have qualified staff to do this. We don't have a no town manager with any experience in this. Uh, we spend half a million dollars a year in salaries for this. What do you see? Okay, so we, we have half of our storefronts are closing. Did you all just notice Woody's? Woody's been here forever. The U-Haul place down on Crystal Lake, the corner of Crystal Lake and Route 12 gone okay we do a terrible job at marketing ourselves most jobs are coming here in new england we have you know eb and nobody when i do marketing in groton nobody is aware we don't market ourselves well well but we're st spending a half a million dollars on the folks who are supposed to be doing this everything in groton is going the wrong way um in and, and, and everything is spend, spend, spend. And the RTM is supposed to be the break on ta that. Property taxes last year went up in one year by, if you remember the 8.7% special tax they took out, and then the budget went up 5.5% as approved by the RTM. Unbelievable. Um, and, you know, I grew up here. You know, if a, if a budget went up 1%, it was unbelievable they always were a half you know a half a percent you know uh, uh three quarters of a percent now we're seeing high single digit double digit increases in property tax voters that is not sustainable and the rtm is supposed to be the ones who are the gatekeepers of that and i will show you that they have not done their job which is why we have to eliminate them um the grand list is going downward. Business and residents are leaving. According to Bob Stefanowski's campaign, 80 people are, are leaving a day, a day. New investment is not even looking at Groton. I'll, I have a little story about a uh, investment company in Boston who I approach, who s do private equity placement, meaning they sell bonds to wealthy people to raise money for commercial real estate projects. They have projects that are financing in Florida and Texas and California and Kansas. So they're right here in Boston. So I went to them. I said, would you look at Groton? Would you help us? The, 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 and I don't know them from Adam. The, the, uh, the boss of this said, I would not touch Connecticut or Groton with a 10-foot pole. And that is the problem right there. And I have expressed this to Bob Stefanowski. If we don't get the big dollars coming into Connecticut, Mass has beat us out completely. Char Charlie Baker's done an excellent job on that. You've got to get these investors interested in even looking at us, and they're not right now. Our pension liability is escalating at the same rate as that of our state. I'll show you graphs on that. We've had a very bad town manager for way too long, Mark Ofinger. The council didn't uh, do anything about it. They kept him in. The, uh, they went and hired a new town manager, who I haven't said much about yet, but I'm starting going to begin, John Burt. I don't think he's a bad person, but I'm changing my mind on that by things he's done. I don't think he has the necessary turnaround skills, negotiating skills, and entrepreneurial abilities to turn this. It's very hard to turn uh, something, a sinking ship around. It takes real skill to do that. And I don't think John has, has done this. I know he hasn't. He came from Michigan. He was a county manager. You didn't have to do that there. He was in charge. He was overseeing a $25 million budget. Here we're, we're $129 million, five times bigger. He's, we need skill here, and that hasn't been done. The next council had a chance, the Democratic uh, majority council that's in now, to John wanted to leave. They could have let him leave without us having to pay a penalty. They didn't take advantage of that. Education scores have become poor, are poor. Uh, we spend some of the highest per student in, the, in southeastern Connecticut, and we are now part of an alliance district. I am embarrassed for that. And, and now 
And I'm going to tell you a story. We're participating in the worst tactics of intimidation. That used to go on in the days of Mark Ofinger. And we'll, I'll sh tell you what I'm talking about. So the emperor were no clothes. Number one, Frank. You all know the story. The emperor was sold a bill of goods by a tailor who told him that this was a magical suit and everybody would respect him more, and it actually was no suit. The tailors made nothing. So he walks around in his skivvies there, and everybody is afraid to tell him that he has no clothes on until some young boy pops up and says, Emperor, you have no clothes. And then all of a sudden, the people recognize it. So people, it tells you that people can be told the same thing over and over again. Our government does that. Politicians do that, okay? And if you say it enough times, people start believing it. And that just happened here recently in the day paper, and we'll all be going through that. Um, I'm going to bring up our two ex, our mayor now, Patrice Grenatowski, uh, Bruce Flax, who I had on show number two. He was a Republican mayor we had who got voted out. They, they act like kings. They, they, there's an arrogance to them, and they have no awareness of what is going on. In, I don't know where these people drive. Or they, 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 they're like the, the, my bull with the blindfold on. They don't see anything. They have no awareness. Um, I went to the, two weeks ago, the Harvest Fest, and there was a vote no booth and a vote yes booth. And I was sickened by what I saw at the vote no booth. It was like a who's who of elected people in Groton because they're so worried about losing power and giving it to you, you the voter. It, it was an amoxymoron, I don't know how to say the word, amoxymoron to see these politicians who just a year ago, a little more than a year ago, were bad-mouthing each other because they were opposite parties, were pals pow-wowing in this tent to resist you because they are truthfully more afraid of you, the voter, than they are of each other. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? They will join together like Iraq and Iran against the United States. Iraq and Iran are two enemies of each other, who, and they hate the United States more, and they'll join together. And that's what's going on. So uh, it, it made me sick to look at that booth. And they're just, they're scared. They're scared they're going to lose their power, um, and their power is to control the budget. So my blindfolded bull here is like the emperor. Obviously, he doesn't see. The bull represents Groton. Uh, the emperor the, uh, the, represents Groton government. And the people, until the young kid yelled out, emperor, you have no clothes, I hope I'm like the young kid. I'm yelling out, you got a town council and RTM for the most part, who accomplish nothing, and, and they're just spending money like water. And they've also, the town council has become progressively more, less exclusive of the public. Uh, they distance themselves from us. This council, I think it started, or the council before, I think this, we only have one public session, five minutes, a month. So only 12 a year to go talk to them, because they really don't want to hear it. They don't want to communicate with us. They have committee of the whole meetings. They call them cow meetings. Okay? They used to sit, because I've been to plenty of council meetings, they used to sit down the tables in front of their high, I don't even think they should have high place where they sit. That's what from a judge from court, where the judge wants to be above people. I don't think a town council should. They should be equal to us. So they, they don't come down now and sit at the table with you in a, see a, a cow meeting. So there are far too many executive sessions. Okay? They bring, uh, I, I'm going to bring up Urbana, Illinois, where uh, John Burt, the town manager, they have a great system where they have the public come in and can ask the four uh, finalists to interview. We don't do, everything here is done behind closed doors. Um, 
The Hearst newspaper just called those of us who want change in Connecticut low information voters, and when in fact it is just the opposite. Those who want to vote yes on, the, on this charter question certainly have, do not have uh, blinders on. They want to be participants in our government. And those, and those who, are, who think things are grotten are just fine. And I think, and that's the impression these, these elected people want to give, that everything is just fine. They have the least information because one does not have to be a rocket scientist and drive around Groton and see that half the businesses are closed. And at the end of the show, my closing, where I have the funeral dirge playing, which is appropriate with our tombstone and spiders and this chain, you're going to see, it didn't take me long, I, you're going to see all the uh, many for sale signs. So um, I'm going to show you things from the last show, the two cartoons from the previous shows. Remember uh, Henry the pig, uh, Frank number two. Remember him, um, and it shows all, and I'm going to go through all of these, um, property taxes, uh, state of Connecticut, burnout. This is back in the time Malloy was coming at Balfour Beatty, Groton Long Point. It's uh, not Groton Long, that should be no ink. Uh, the Oddfellows Home, Solar City, all getting off the hook, don't pay any taxes. Uh, and it's getting fatter and fatter while we're getting skinnier and skinnier and have to leave. Their biggest thing that I'm seeing, I heard that the council, I wasn't there, their biggest thing they're paying attention to lately is plastic straws. Can you believe that? Plastic straws. To make an ordinance to disallow plastic straws. While we are being charged 14% tax increases. <sighs> Um, I'm going to go into what happened to me on this Monday. This show is on Wednesday. We're, we're filming on Wednesday. All of a sudden, there were two police officers at my house. The last time that happened, my, my house, another house in Groton, was burning down. So I don't take lightly when police officers throw up my house. And they are using, this is something that Ofinger did when I used to have a business. I had a mobile home park here. He used to come after me for doing, for participating with the with the, uh, the the previous group and being on John Pillar's show, and they said to me that it came down from the town council. I have a trailer, a flatbed trailer, parked on my property, but a little of it sticking out. And can we show the pictures, Frank? Number three B, three C. Okay, there's my trailer. My property line is right where you see those weeds, okay? So what is it? Sticking in the road about three feet. There is no no parking signs on my street. And to the right is my property, okay? That's the rear of the trailer. Let's go to the next one, Frank. Okay, that's the front end of the trailer, and it's sticking on the street about a foot. Okay, let's go to the next one, Frank. That's my street a little further down, and that's a car that's parked exactly like my trailer is. Let's go to the next one. That's complete. That's sticking out in the road. And if you don't have a driveway, you got to park on the road. And as in Mystic, No Ink, there's many places people don't have driveways, so they have to parallel park on the road. I have the police at my house because of my trailer. It's registered. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay? And I said, why? And apparently they had to, they sent first a young cop, and he didn't know what he was looking at, and then they sent two more, spending your tax dollars on foolishness to intimidate me. That's what this is all about. And those are the things that Ofinger used to do. Okay? And I won't go into it. I could spend a whole show on that. And I thought John Burt was above all this, that he wasn't going to be dragged into being a weapon of the council. And the police chief shouldn't be either. So I want to tell you, I pray a price to be bringing all this to you. Mixing police with politics is what I have found in the past governments do when they are doing a bad job. And the excuse is always, oh, I got complaints, a complaint. I'll tell you, how many times have I gone to the town council to file complaints? 
and they have done absolutely nothing. But my complaints are big. They're like, let's go get millions of dollars from this entity that's not paying any taxes. What is my my flatbed trailer? It doesn't collect any taxes. It, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't hurt a soul. Okay, but no, they're and the and the cops were very nice. One of them, Eben Van Voorhees, is one of my favorite cops in the town, and they were very nice about it. And they knew that this was all, you know, pressure, pressure. They're using the police. It's okay that Belfort Beatty doesn't pay seven and a half million. I fell six hundred thousand. Knowing school four hundred thousand. No, do they listen to that complaint? No. And the day paper has joined the fray too. Um, they just did. And what did I do with it? An article. I don't know where it went here. I had an article that uh, was just in Monday's paper um, that said, let me get it out here. Oh, boy. i got to go down the pile here. Okay. This was on Monday's paper, the 22nd. It says, the title of it, Four Southeastern Connecticut Municipalities Considered Distressed. And Groton isn't one of them, and it should be. It shows that Groton has improved economically and I believe continues to be on track to be one of the best places in Connecticut to do business or to live, said town manager John Burt. Next sentence is the one that is the catcher. Burt named the stabilizing factor and now growth in the stabilizing factor now growth of electric boat is a major reason for the economic improvement. He also gave credit to the city and town leadership and to the offices of planning and development service promoting Groton and creating an atmosphere where people want to do business. They're always patting themselves on the back. You have to ingratiate yourself, I guess, when you're not accomplishing anything. That is a lie. Citizens of Groton, that is a lie. Your town manager is spreading fake news. This is fake news. And his job is not to get the council reelected. He is supposed to be a professional. He's not supposed to be their weapon to go after people who, who say what I just said, who, who are showing the truth in numbers, what's really going in Groton. That is not his job. He should refuse to partake in stuff like that. And also the police chief. You know, I call the police chief. He, 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 he was, his name is Fazaro, Chief Fazaro. And I had quite a conversation with him. At first he said it was planning who sent, I said planning doesn't send police. I said it was you. And then he apologized and said he was wrong. And then he kind of agreed that it was the town council. Okay. So there's what's called a separation of police and state. You don't use police to go after people that you don't like what they're saying. Okay, so um, the joint, the day paper, liberal paper. I don't even get the day paper anymore because I can't stand it. So people, people give me this. People pass these articles on to me. So, um, and, and another thing, there's a weird relation between the day in our Groton government. And I don't know, it's almost like uh, the day paper owes them something because they always take the side of the most liberal folks. Uh, most people, papers aren't like that. And, um, and, and how anybody can not consider Groton distress has got to have their head examined. Examine. Um, so, again, the town manager's job is not to be the whipping boy and, and, and not to falsely praise staff when they haven't done anything. And you're probably asking me why, what this has to do with vote yes. It's got a lot to do with it because the council is the ones who hire the town manager and they, they, uh, they're, they're not being controlled and they, they, it's, it's connected because this gives us power, okay? So I can't think of anything. I drove through Groton twice a day at least. That's economic improvement in Groton. Maybe you can email me and let me know. We got a new Filipino restaurant, which I like to, but I can't go there because they don't stay open till after six. So I give them a half a year or six months, you know, six months to survive because how can you have a restaurant that closes at six o'clock? 
We have a bank that went from one side of the street to the other side of the street, and now the building they were in is, is empty. That's not economic development. Um, they're building this volleyball center on 184. What the heck that is? I don't think there is good jobs in a volleyball center. So I give that a year to survive. But we lost a real business, Woody's, as I mentioned already, U-Haul. That's a real business that gives real jobs and provides real service. That's gone. And every day I notice more and more for sale signs or for rent signs. And they stay up forever. So let me get into the history of the RTM. It was intended, it was created after World War II. Of course, I wasn't alive then. But it was, I way I understand it was created as a temporary um, step to getting to a, a selectman form of government, which every town, 168 towns, 169 towns in Connecticut, 168 towns in Connecticut have, I believe. And when you have a selectman form of government, you don't need, uh, it's in state legislation to have the right to referendum. So all those towns automatically get the right to referendum. They don't have a charter. Their structure is already set by state law. And that's what we should go to as a, as a selectman form of government. So we have two legislative bodies in Groton. The, the only town in Connecticut, uh, the representative town meeting, which has 41 members in a town with only, only uh, 29,000 people. That means every election, 82 people have to run. The cost for it, it costs money to run it. Uh, John Burt told me it costs for him $4,000 a year to go to the meetings. The senior tenor told me, and I don't believe this, it's $500 to heat it and such for the building, for the senior center they have it. Town clerk, uh, Betsy McCausher, she used to be my friend. I'm telling you, it's time for her to pack it up. I asked her, because she has a big cost with going to these meetings and organize it, communicating with 41 people. She couldn't do it. She said it was $1,000 a year. She, it's impossible. She either didn't know how to do it or didn't want to do it. And I did an FOI request on that one. And uh, I'm going to conjecture that it costs at least $20,000 a year to operate the RTM. And it needs a lot of qualified people because they go through the budget. And, and it's impossible to find that many people uh, in a town of our size. Um, and I want to go through, because there's always confusion on taxes. The town tax, which is property tax, pays for the schools and the town roads, the you know, public works, uh, all that. And that is all paid for by property tax the most onerous tax to anyone, okay? Um, and you pay it if you have an income or not. It's always due. So that's, it's one of the worst taxes there. It's the most um, harmful to anyone. So what is the, the charter is the constitution of our town, okay? And it says how the government of the town is set up. And again, we're not voting on approval of the new school. We did that. We're voting on a new constitution or structure of our town. Uh, so, uh, so what we're voting on, this is not complicated. People are making it complicated. So basically what we're, the new charter, which doesn't have changes to all sections, it focuses on the RTM. We are eliminating the 41 members of the RTM. The RTM will go away. And I call it the coffee clutch, because you will see later when we get to the data part of this show that they have done nothing for decades, nothing. It's a time for them to get together, uh, gossip, and accomplish nothing. nothing. And their existence delays the budget. It's, it, it makes it much more, com by months. For what? Nothing. And we're going to replace it with a nine-member committee who was elected from one from each district. There's nine districts in Groton. They are advisory, okay? So they do not vote. They are elected. Um, and we're going from, so we're going from 41 members to nine members. I think that's a good thing. Um, the thing I don't like in this, count, in this charter is we're going to get a four-year term. 
I don't like that for the council members. So the council stays the same, nothing changes. But don't let that stop you because that can be fixed later. So um, that's the most important thing. Many citizen grants, we've been voting decades for this this opportunity to vote yes. So don't let the detail of the four years, because that can be fixed later, stop us. We're getting the big, the big apple. The big gazonger is getting the right to vote on our budget. And what this will do is pressure the council and the school board. And I, I got to get into that. You're going to vote two votes every budget time. You're going to vote for the school budget and the council budget. Um, and if it gets voted down, you're going to go vote again. Uh, and they will, and the board, school board and the council will have to respond to these cuts. They can't ignore the vote. They can't squirm out of it. They can't point to the RTM and say, who, who was, who's just been a rubber stamp for decades. And for a change, our town council and our school board will have a real watchdog. That's what the RTM is supposed to be, is a watchdog, because they are elected you know, from each district. And they haven't done their job. So for a change, we're going to get a real watchdog. And this will make them do a better job than the poor job and they've done in hiring people. But hire more capable per people who are capable of, of doing the cuts, who are capable of doing economic development, who are capable of uh, uh, attracting investment dollars into Groton. This will put pressure on all those things to happen. And I just want to mention here, even the manager has told me he's going to leave when his son graduates from Fitch, which I think he's a self, I'm not sure. I think it's three more years. So he doesn't even want to stay here because he sees the writing on the walls if things don't change. So as I said, the changes are not perfect, but we can take care, care of that after. Um, having the RTM makes our government sluggish, non-responsive. 41 people are too many to get anything accomplished of substance. Um, they've been no check and balances to the council. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to show you those numbers from Cindy Landry, who's the director of finance. I'm not making any of this up. Um, you know, the, the, the spending keeps going up at this incredible pace. Um, so this will force the council to do a responsible budget because their goal should be not to have it keep going back to the voter. And presently, the RTM is just a cakewalk for them because they don't do anything. Matter of fact, they often put their cuts back in, back in. So we've had decades of history in Groton where the politicians cannot be trusted. They, they tell you stuff that's not true. Um, to get you to vote. And I'm going to tell you, here's one example. Every one of them on this new council said economic development is their top priority. You tell me what they've done. They haven't revamped the economic development department. It needs it badly. They haven't gotten people in command who are experienced. You tell me what is, I, I like to know. There's been nothing done to combine the city and the town. Probably the biggest thing to, um, I bet you that would bring $10 million in savings. Um, Keith Hedrick lied to us. He ran, when he ran for the city mayor, he said, I want to work on combining, at least start with services. He's, he, he's totally against it now. Uh, so this charter change, voting yes, takes the politicians out of the spending. Okay, so... Um, and their argument against this, the politician argument, oh, special interest groups will control things. Well, who's more special interest than these politicians? Who, who, tell me, they support, everyone, Balfour Beatty is a special interest. They're not paying seven and a half million dollars and you're paying for it. A big privately owned company headquartered in London. Uh, the Odd Fellows, all new construction there. They, you're paying for their services because they don't pay a dime of taxes. Okay, so you're paying it. So, um, you know, when I was growing up here, Groton didn't have all these problems. Um, we had 
Everything was in one town hall, including the police department, everything. We didn't have this uh, senior center that's way overbuilt, way overdone. Um, so they, they give these favors out to these entities, you know, the Odd Fellows Home. I, you know, what do you think? If you live in the Odd Fellows Home, your, rent, your, your costs are lower because you don't pay any property tax, so you're going to vote for those people. So who voted? There was a council voted to not accept their own Charter Revision Commission's um, uh, the, the, this, the, this charter that they're putting for vote. They went out and petitioned to put on the ballot because they're, the council that put them in uh, voted it down. And the, who did? Antipas, Perzati, Flax, Watson, and Moravzik. Okay? Um, put them on your vote, to never, on your list, and never vote for them again. Um, so the things I want to do in the future after we vote yes is I like to look at we change next step to a selectman form of government. And then, and, and oh, by the way, if you have a selectman form of government, you also have the right to put ordinances, things that aren't the budget, on the ballot. Uh, I want to go back to a two year term, um, and I like to have a strong mayor form of government. This town manager system doesn't work because he or she is too. Uh, doesn't do what they're supposed to be doing, which is to give their professional opinion and not be uh, the working primarily on getting the council reelected. A mayor system wouldn't work that way because you can you vote directly for the mayor. Um, so there's two parts to this show. Um, the first part is I'm going to go very quickly through it. Um, is we're going to revisit Balfour Beatty and you know all those things the the major things that the council hasn't done and they would do it if they needed to get, find money so let's start and the second part is me showing you actual data okay with charts and graphs so let's bring up number four and five frank okay so the, you've seen these before balfour Beatty. um is not paying their services cost seven and a half million dollars that was a year ago two years ago it's probably higher now they're a large public company headquartered in england um, it costs you i recalculated 192 dollars per year for every man woman and child in groton to support these guys unbelievable they have shareholders all around the world, and you are actually paying because they get off scot-free and don't pay a dime in taxes. And Solar City is the same way. And as the population goes down here, which it is, that number, $192 per person, is going to keep going up. John Burt throw me a bone and said, oh, we're talking to a lawyer, and it's going to take months and months and months to find a lawyer. You know, lawyers don't work slowly. He, he, they're not doing anything. This council's doing nothing because they're not hungry enough for money. And if we voted the budget down, they'd have to start doing, getting money somewhere. And this is some of the low-lying fruit, okay? Um, so let's bring up seven, chart number seven, Frank. Okay, you remember these? Balfour Beatty, it costs us the red part this is for the civilian students uh, they don't pay anything for the schools so you and I that that hundred and ninety two dollars per person is paying for that red part because they don't pay for any of the there's a lot of kids in there and, and by the way it's not military anymore it's civilian uh, any or anybody there's military and civilian but it's anybody can live there so let's bring up number eight Frank okay so this is the military it's less the red because we do get some money from the, mil the Navy, but it's nowhere near enough to pay for the full cost. So again, we get nothing, uh, no remuneration from them. Um, let's talk about the next one. Um, the Alliance District. That is an embarrassment. Those are the cities of which we have joined in you'll see that they're not some of the best cities in the world in Connecticut. 
um, because we have underperforming students. So we pay our teachers some of the highest salaries in the state, and Connecticut pays some of the highest salaries in the country. The, a budget referendum will put pressure on, you gotta understand the, the school board submits their budget to the council who submits their budget to the RTM. So if we put pressure on the council, the RTM would be gone for the vote yes, uh, would put pressure on the board of ed because they turn their budget down and the Board of Ed would have to listen to, to it. And underperformers, like our superintendent, who lets us get this boob prize called the Alliance District, we sh should be gone. We should be getting people in there who know how to handle the situation and get us out of this Alliance District. So it will put a lot of pressure on the school board because their budget will be voted on and the council. And, uh, prevent us having these crazy 14.8% budget increases. Okay, um, Fairview show, which I did a show with Mayor Flack, show number two. Let me explain the history. In 1893, uh, it was just a nursing home. You had to be a member to go there. And they, we gave them the stake to track them to come here, gave them $100,000 in assessed value abatement. That number has gone up. Um, Heather Bond Summers tried to get it jacked up to 35 million. I think I embarrassed her and she lowered it back down to the 25 million. At the, don't ask me why this has to be legislated. Um, they have restaurant in there. You know, it's a beautiful place. Anybody can go there. Anybody can go in their nursing home now. Um, so let's bring number 12 up. So Number 12, Frank. So that's, this is what your council does. This is the proposed bill from Summers for 35 million. And, and it shows it again. I don't know, there's two versions, but they're both 35 million, 12 and 13, Frank. And then there was a letter, number 14, that is from our previous mayor. And it says, we don't support this bill. Then I think Heather Bond Summers, a state senator, got a hold of them and got angry with them because she has voters in there. And they retract it. Go to the next one. And they re this letter says, we retract what we said in the last letter. All of a sudden, they're for giving them the right to steal from us. So then... Number 16, they, there's the rewritten bill showing it was lowered to 25 million, but it went through. Okay, so the next one is a press release. I brought her up at the beginning of the show. Christine Conley expressing her happiness. She sent this press release out, her happiness about you voters being stolen from by this entity. That's essentially, she's telling you this is a good thing, okay? That's why she's got to go. And you're voting on, that's, that was John Scott last week. He's running against her. Um, if we had a right to referendum on the budget in Groton, we could, so Fairview, my estimate would be they pay 600,000 taxes. And we could vote we could put to referendums and demand that, that the budget be lowered. We would squeeze the council. So they would be more inclined to go to Fairview and say, hey, um, you know, you, we, we, they'll fight it, okay? But it's easy now because they get the rubber stamp. The, the RTM doesn't do anything, doesn't pressure them, okay? Next, knowing school property. This is the one I always puts a smile on my face, number 18. Okay, <laughs> this, is, this is the biggest farce of all. This is a, a big property where the neighbor, knowing school was. Uh, they got this bright idea, a few of the people who live around it, that they don't want their views destroyed. This belongs to the town, of course, because it was school property. And they said, we're going to uh, grow vegetables here so we can feed the um, hungry. <laughs> like there's a lot of hungry in knowing. Um, and I went there when I did this show, that's the garden. It's dirt. 
There were about three tomato plants. I think you can see them on the left there. Nothing, absolutely nothing. That is costing us every year about $400,000 in lost taxes. That could be a very nice 55 and older, just like the Odd Fellows Haas. But talk about special interests. There we go, the council. All they look out for is special, special interests. The people who live around this don't want their view taken away. Okay? Disgusting. All right? So the root of all evil is that these elected people, they buy votes. So the, the uh, and, and it's interesting, no ink, no ink got listened to. But William Sealing School property, which is a lower income area in Groton, they came in, they built this hideous new water tower right in front of their neighborhood. It's hideous. They come in, they complain, nobody does a damn thing about it, okay? So this thing that they, they pay attention to, that they get a complaint, they know it's discretionary. They cannot pay any attention to it. Next, joining this together of the city and the town. They, the last council, the public council, made a gesture by hiring John Burt and said, oh, he was a county director, so he's the kind of guy we need who's going to join the two together. As I said, Keith Hendrick lied to us. He got elected and then he did nothing. There has been not one effort by this council to join the city and the town, and I believe that has a bigger savings in taxes than Balfour Beatty. I believe, but nobody does the study because they don't want to know the answer. I believe there's over $10 million in savings, probably much more, okay? Um, but there's no pressure because they can just approve any budget they want because the RTM doesn't pressure them. So even Malloy recognized this flagrancy of theirs and, and he claims that's why he came down on us a year ago because they, he said Groton has plenty of leeway where to find money. They have these two entities with redundant services they can join. And that's, I don't agree with him on much, but I do agree on that. So if we have the right to vote on our budget, and I want you to understand the connection here, we can put pressure on them. And they have, the, tr the council has many avenues to find money. And they don't do it because they're not under any pressure. So these problems will get solved, but, and they won't get solved if we don't do anything. And the only way we have to do it is by us doing it, the voter. The RTM isn't going to do it. They never have. Another failing in the council, finding a capable town manager. It's extremely, extremely important to have good leadership when you're doing a turn, turnaround. Uh, Olfinger was a disaster. He got us into this mess. Should have gotten rid of him years ago, so another council failing. Balfour Beatty is negligence. My opinion, Olfinger should be investigated for negligence. Because every other town, if you recall, there's three towns in Rhode Island, two up in Maine, all have Balfour Beatty housing in it, and they all get paid something. They negotiate. Groton's the only one, and we have the most housing here. That was all during Ofinger's day. He ignored it. He was lazy, okay? Left us with a mess. And this new town manager who's led by the council isn't doing a damn thing, okay? So I gave the last council a list of characters for a new town manager. It was from the private sector, entrepreneurial, marketing background with commercial real estate experience, turnaround experience, uh, you need a special breed of person, good negotiator, not afraid to trade change, isn't pushed or, you know, keeps their nose to the target, which is to improve our economics, preferably from New England. Bert's from uh, Michigan, need to know the culture here. They didn't do, they didn't listen to one thing. John Burt is the absolute opposite of this. And if they were pressured by the budget, they would have to get a capable person there who's capable of of tightening the belt. John Bird is not. There's two types of managers, okay? There's a manager that does, carries the status quo, keeps the things moving. That's John Bird. Then there's another kind of manager who's an entrepreneurial type, who knows how 
to, that's Bob Stefanowski, okay, who knows how to find excess, knows how to turn things around, okay? There are two different kinds of people, okay? Um, so, so those are six major, I think I went through all, Knowing School, Fairview, the Alliance District, Bel Alliance District, I think I went through that, that's an embarrassment, I, you know about that it's a disgrace and what it does being in about alliance district is nobody wants to invest here you don't want to invest in a town that's got a failing education system so those are six major issues that the council has failed many councils have failed um, and if we had the right to referendum they'd be forced to to pay attention and turn these things around and collect money and make our town a better more attractive to investors and they're not going to do that unless you vote yes uh, i'm going to read a little thing a vote yes on the structural changes described in this new chart would put you the taxpayer in control and force the council to grapple with these issues and not use the rtm as a rubber stamp to justify their lack of attention to these multi-million dollar savings they will continue to use diversionary tactics like plastic straws and picking on me for parking my trail in front of my house while you grow poorer and poorer each year okay part two this is where we're going to show the real hard data uh, all the town data comes from uh, Cindy Landry or from the state uh, office of policy and management. I just showing it in a better way to understand it. Um, I'm, I'm going to show most graphs are going to have actual data and then there's going to be a trend line, which is an average through the data that's always moving. Um, uh, and I'm going to tell you, I had trouble in getting some of these numbers. It was very obvious that uh, Cindy Landry didn't want to get, especially the retirement deficit numbers. She did not want to give it to me because it isn't a pretty picture. Um, so let's bring up a number 19B, Frank. Okay, you saw this in a few shows ago. And this is a stunning graph. It shows the grand list going down. Let me remind, grand list is the summation of the values of all the property and personal property in a town, and the budget is how much the town's spending. In a healthy town, you can see the red is the trend lines. In a healthy town, those two, two um, lines should be parallel, and they're not. Um, they're moving exactly opposite of each other. Um, so let's go on to the next graphs. Uh, the next, don't change it, Frank. The next three graphs are the scariest of all. And this is the mill rate. The mill rate is the amount you pay, how many dollars per uh, $1,000 of assessed value of your home, your property, whatever you own, okay? And this is from 2008 to 2017. The average increase is 4% per year. I cringe at this. This is historically, okay? Um, and that's a trend line. You can see the trend line follows the actual. The black is the actual. Um, in a, in a, a, in a growing economy, meaning the grand list is increasing, the mill rate should go be the opposite. We're always looking at direction of these trend lines. It should be going down. It should be like skiing down a hill rather than climbing up a mountain here. So um, I would like to know where John Burt, when he spoke to the day paper, he doesn't mention this type of stuff. And if his ED, economic development team, was doing such a great job, then this would be showing signs of abatement and showing no signs of it. Um, let's bring up number 21. All right, you've seen this before. These are the mill rate numbers that the new school, and, and this is just frightening to me, there's 18 years of greater than one mill rate increases. <laughs> and this is enough to make you run out of ground. We can't sustain this. So I took these numbers and took the 4%, because that's what's going on now, and I combined them. And that's the next graph, which is 
number 22. This is your future, folks in Groton. That's it. So look at this. Look at this. Let me get it up here. I got to I got to find it. Um uh in hey, you know, I'm not doing a good job in keeping uh, up with these. The um the uh, year 2000, and let's add 10 years on, 2008, that'd be 2028, the mill rate's going to be 40, okay? That's scary. Will, will, in 2000, in um, 30 years from now, we're going to be up to over 70. I'll just tell you, folks, Hartford... <laughs> They're at 65 and they should be bankrupt, okay? This is not, this graph is not sustainable. It is not, and this graph alone is a reason why you gotta vote yes. Because they have done, the council and the RTM have done a lousy job, okay? Now let's go, so that, that, that graph, that should be on this, the, these um, signs, that graph should be on the signs because it, 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 it's pathetic what we're seeing here. Let's go to number 23. This is an interesting graph. It's the least important of all of them. It's a fund balance. It's a rainy day fund. You know, it shows me that these politicians, these elected people know exactly what they're doing because they know that they're powerless without the ability to borrow money. And you can't borrow if you're, you let your fund balance go downhill. So look at it. It's even gone up. We don't need a, a big fund balance because we shouldn't be borrowing money. But this is what gives them power. Is, and that's why we had to get charged that 8.7% to keep this fund balance off, up. Because if you remember, Summers took money from it when she was running for state senator to say that she, uh, to keep the, bo the, the, so the, the budget didn't go up. So she took money out of it. So they are paying a lot of attention to this because it gives them power, because they can borrow from it. And we should not let this happen. And voting yes would prevent this from happening, bring more sensibility. Okay, number 24, the pension liability. And Frank was wonderful. He took this graph on the right from the last show and put it in with Groton, because I wanted to show, and unfortunately I don't have the data for the state of Connecticut. This is our pension liability. This is the unfunded liability. And if you see the red line, the red line is the states. And if you draw a straight line going up, and ours is on the left, there's no, there's no difference. The increment between them is about the same. There's no di we have the same slope up the rate of increase as the state of Connecticut. We all know how bad off the state of Connecticut is. The state of Connecticut is in trouble. Well, guess what, folks? We're in trouble. We're on the same path as the state, but they get a lot more publicity because they're much bigger than us, but we have the same dilemma. And this, these two together show that. And thank you, Frank, for getting these two graphs on the same page so we can compare them. Um, so, um, next, 25A, looks complicated. This is the climax of the show. It's not a hard chart. The, the ziggy zaggy lines are the actual data and the, the straight lines are the trend line, okay? And you can see they're going up. And this is the, the blue is the, the way the budget works now is first the town manager comes out with his budget. That's the blue line. Then the council uh, in the green line comes out, looks at his budget, and, and you can see they reduce it. It's lower. Then they give it to the RTM, and that's the red line. And you can see the red line is on top of the green line. They have done absolutely nothing in those nine years up there. They have, this is the kind of, this graph shows it all. The RTM has done nothing. Their existence, if they never met, you would get the same, the same results. It, they don't have any impact on our budget. That's why we got to get rid of them. Go to the vote. Yes, folks. They are not a watchdog. They've done nothing. 
coffee clutch. Um, let's bring the next graph up. Okay. So this graph compares to the last graph because it's a spending last. And you, if you recall, it's up. This is just, we couldn't get it on the same page. The state of Connecticut's in trouble. We're in trouble. They're both uphill. Okay. Next. This is a really interesting graph. This takes that graph with the three lines before and shows the difference between the RTM budget compared to the town council budget. Um, it says only once has in nine years has the, they reduced the council's budget by a minuscule amount. That's where it goes below zero there in 2014. Twice it was nearly the same. So in 2015 and 2016, they didn't do anything. It's virtually the same budget. And then in, a f in the seven years, they increased the budget by a little bit. So you can see the most they ever increased the budget by was 1.4, I can't see up there, 1.4%. Uh, and they decreased by point, you know, half a percent. Point, no, less than half, 0.1%. They haven't done anything. That's not what a watchdog group. That line, the black line, should be consistently below the red line. Or below zero, I'm sorry. Below zero. To show that they did something. Remember, this is the percentage difference between the RTM budget and the town council budget. And they've done nothing. Nothing. And that's why we get the two lines on top of each other. So... They are simply a rubber stamp that wastes a lot of people's time. They delay and complicate the budget process by a substantial amount. They're nothing but a coffee clutch where 41 people get, people get to there together 12 times a year and do what I don't know. So I have given you two overriding reasons to vote yes November 6th. The town council receives no pref pressure from the RTM to look at uh, ways to get money, okay? They, the RTM has failed as a watchdog. I gave you six reasons of things that the council hasn't done because they're under no pressure to do so. There is millions of dollars in budget savings out there between uh, Balfour Beatty, Odd Fellows, Knowing School, um, to get them to pay their fair share of taxes, and they don't do anything about it because they get away with it. Um, and if the, RT, if, if the RTM did their job, they should be forcing the council. You, you, got, you see, the RTM, this vote is a lot about the council. It's, it's a little hard to make that connection because the RTM is the watchdog group of the council. When the watchdog isn't watching, the, or what is it? The, the, when the cat's away, the mouse, mice play. The cat, the, the cat is the RTM. The mice are the, is the council. The cat's been away for decades. They haven't done anything. So the mice are playing, and the playing is they're spending a lot of your money. Um, so, and, and other things that aren't budget-oriented, we're now in alliance district, so we're spending money in... We have very high, you know, the high, very high paid teachers. We have a very high paid superintendent. We're, the result of all this money is it go, we, we're in an alliance district, which is the worst thing to be in. So what good did that money do? Uh, there's been no effort to combine the city and the town. Huge savings there. There's no pressure to do so. They don't hire experienced people who know how to do this stuff. So... There, the council gets away with that. All of this would change if there was pressure on them to reduce the budget. And the RTM's budget centers consume staff time, costing us money. They delay the budget process. They complicate the budget process. To what end? Nothing. And the only way to stop this is to, get, is to get a handle on it, is to take the politics out of it, and we the people vote directly on the budget.
The council needs to have pressure put on them to work on our best interests and that that will only happen if we have the right to vote directly on their work, which a vote yes on November 6 will achieve. It's the only way out of Groton's mess and deteriorate an economic situation. The opposite of the lie that John Burt made to the newspaper uh, that that you witness every day when you drive through Groton and you see the mess every day and see the many closed storefronts and the many for sale signs and for lease signs that you're going to see at the end of the show. Once we get Groton back on sound financial footing, we can only then have the luxuries that we falsely enjoy now. Get government to work for us, not for itself. Vote yes on November 6. So, the show times for, for the Hartford show that I sh that's on about Connecticut, the governor race, uh, is on um, Tuesday at 8.30, Thursday at 8, Saturday at 9. These are all PMs. This show, Vote Yes, is on Monday at 8. This is show number 8. Wednesday at 9, Friday at 7, and Sunday at 7. You can watch it also anytime you want on, um, on YouTube. We will repeat these shows on those dates and times up to the election day. You can email me at shakeupgrotten at gmail.com. Um, if you didn't understand anything, please ask me. I don't mind. I don't want to have to keep showing cartoons that show that we are doing badly here. I want to wear my happy jacket you can see it right here i want to wear my happy jacket again i got black on my funeral sweater i don't know if you can see it and chains around my neck here that are holding us down we all have a chain that chain is going to get heavier and heavier if we don't vote yes so i hope you all understand the criticalness of this this is extraordinarily important please get out there and support this non-political issue, it's, it's really an issue about your pocketbook to save money. So thank you very much. And the next show, we're going to be doing probably on economic development. Um, but please, let's, let me put back on my happy jacket again in, in the next show. Thank you. Mm -hmm.